Hey Jellyfish Box, this is a video reply for you. I know you were messaging me to try to figure out exactly what kind of glass cutter I'm using, maybe the technique I'm using to break glass. Um, the technique I learned from Dan Rojas of Green Power Science. Um, I kind of refined the technique a little bit. It seems to work a little bit better for me the way that I do it, and I'll explain it. Um, basically what I have is a piece of, this is my, um, well let me first talk about the glass cutter. This glass cutter right here I got from a stained glass shop here in Portland, Oregon. And um, it's a self-oiling glass cutter. Uh, the self-oiling effect, the end of the this um, cutter would push in and out and it would let oil out. But I kind of just uh, taped that up so that doesn't happen. So it's not self-oiling. Probably paid more for it. Um, oops. But anyways, what's important for a glass cutter, a higher quality one, you can buy a cheap one from any hardware store that's basically a stick of steel or wood with a little uh, metal tip and it's really hard, sorry my camera's not very good, but there's a little spinning wheel right here in the end. Um, if it spins really true and doesn't wobble back and forth, that's better. Um, it's a very little tiny wheel and it's metal. Um, you can get steel wheels and put score lines in glass. This one is uh, carbide, so it's um, electroplated carbon metal composite that's on the blade and it helps cut into metal. It's just high quality tools have carbide tips and stuff. Um, so a carbide tipped one will run you anywhere from like 20 to $40. Um, you might be able to pick one up pretty cheap on eBay. The form that um, Dan Rojas uses and he shows you um, on his video, that thing is um, specifically designed, it looks like, to put score lines in bottles. Um, his technique is primarily showing you what to do after you make the score line, so you could use any technique. I built my own form and with a glass cutter to make this uh, score lines. So let me explain how you use that. Um, basically, um, this blue item here is my vise, and it only opens up so wide, so I kind of trimmed down a 2x4 so it can fit in there. But this piece right here is a 2x4. And here's another 2x4 that's a it makes a big L. Um, I put a corner bracket here to hold it in place really well. And then I just used um, some straight stock right there or mending plate, whatever you want to call it. And I screwed in the end to hold that end in. So it's very sturdy. Um, this piece of wood is basically just floating. It's a you know little half inch, uh, 5 eighths, I don't know, piece of wood. And I found a piece of scrap metal that's shaped like a cone. Um, and that I use to hold the end of the beer or wine bottle. So as you spin that, you can make a very even, perfect cut with your glass cutter. Let's see. Um, this piece of wood right here is just attached to the bottom of this 2x4. And I use that just as a resting just like as a stabilizer that holds the end of a long beer bottle or wine bottle so that you can um, so, you have, so that you don't have to balance it while you're making your score line. Um, every time you want to make a cut with a glass cutter, you need to C-clamp the glass cutter down and the roller wheel spins this way towards you as you roll the glass. And depending where you want to make your cut, like you can make um, smaller little tumbler bottles or glasses. If you make the score line down here, I have it particularly up here because I was making one of my family members a um, a big, tall, recycled wine glass piece for making. Can I made them a candle, and I used some chemicals to etch some designs in the glass. It was pretty neat, but um. Yeah, so anyways, you stick the wine glass in here, the, or the bottle. You position the um, cutter so that it's straight up and down, perpendicular to the bottle, and it's held in place here. And you spin it, and when you spin it, you can kind of hear the noise. I'm putting like maybe five pounds of pressure. And you go around one time, make the score line. Okay, and that's about a t one time. I'm not even going to use this bottle. I was just kind of showing you how to do it. I try to go a lot more consistently and evenly um, when I make my score line. Um, and I also propped up the cutter 
with a piece of metal so that it aims down and touches the center of the bottle. I thought that it would maybe have a little bit better um, friction when I was pushing the glass into the carbide cutter. So that's basically how that works. Um, the technique that I kind of refined of Dan Rojas's is I take the bottle and I have a little tea kettle that warms up really fast. I fill up a separate pitcher with just cold tap water. I um, don't need to chill it down or anything. And I basically, over the sink, I just put a, a towel in the bottom of the sink so that when the glass falls apart, it doesn't break and shatter and, you know, send little fragments of glass through the air. That sounds dangerous. But basically what I do is I take the bottle with the score line and right along the score line, you can kind of see it right in the center of the screen there. I rapidly pour hot water over the score line and just twist it back and forth so the hot water gets all over that score line. Aim it down like this so the water doesn't come back at your fingers. And um, do that for about 10 seconds. Then very rapidly, within like, you know, four seconds or so, um, set down the hot water and start pull pouring cold water over that score line. You might hear some tiny cracking, crackling of the glass, or you might not. doesn't really matter. Um, then rapidly set down that cold water. And as soon as that hot water comes back and it uh, hits that score line, usually within a second, but sometimes it's five seconds, um, the glass will literally separate right along that score line. Um, the most important um, change to my technique was... Um, how rapidly I changed between the hot and cold water. So you start with hot water for about 10 seconds, very quickly to cold water. And then as soon as you go back to the hot water, it usually falls apart right away. Um, and it also um, seems like that the quicker that you go back and forth between the temperatures, the more even your um, break is along the score line. Uh, once you get kind of good at it, you'll know that if you don't do a really good consistent even score line or it doesn't look right when it's done, um, it's probably not going to break so well. So, you know, just try to be um, very even and consistent with your, with your score lines. Um, and only go around one and make one score line. If you keep continuing on, uh, the common misconception is, you know, if I make the same score line over and over and over on the same spot, then the, it will break easier. But that's um, absolutely not the case it will break in many different directions instead of that one plane that you made with the score line and it'll look worse. So um, just do it smarter, make one good score line. Um, I think that's everything you might need to know. If you need to know anything else, I can make a short video or get a hold of me and send me a message and I'll try to give you more information. All right.